so a few months ago, I got this old Lenovo ThinkPad. But ever since then, it's been laying around dormant. So I decided recently to try and repurpose it into a small and simple cybersecurity home lab. My plans were to install Proxmox on it so that I could play around with virtualization and then set up a few other things like a simple pfSense config, which would separate Proxmox and my local network. I also wanted to set up an Ubuntu server with Portainer, which would preferably run a web app like OWASP True Shop and a Kali box alongside that to act as the attack machine. But before we start this video, I would like to say that I'm relatively new to Proxmox and the software I'll be configuring, so if you have any recommendations, feel free to tell me in the comments. This video will act more as a documentation for my project rather than a tutorial, so keep that in mind as you're watching. With that said, let's get started. To start everything off, the first thing I needed to do was wipe the existing Windows partition on the laptop and install Proxmox. After downloading the latest release on the official website, I dropped the ISO file into my Ventoy configured USB, which is a convenient software that allows any USB to boot to multiple operating system images. All that was left to do at that point was to actually boot into Proxmox and walk through the installation. Initially, I wanted to download Proxmox 8, but after encountering a lot of weird errors, I downgraded to version 7.4, and that booted just fine. The installation is fairly straightforward, and after waiting for a few minutes, the laptop boots into Proxmox, and I was ready to start configuring everything. Laptop? Okay, so now that uh, everything is installed on the laptop, and it's connected by ethernet, I should be able to access it using this address because um, I've set it to be static on my router. So if we go to this address, we can see this is indeed the Proxmox web console um, and we can log in like normal. And that is just the base install right here. So mainly what I wanna configure here is to actually make sure that um, our laptop lid can be closed because one of the issues with the laptop is that um, the screen will always be on. So we're just going to configure that real quick and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so you can see here, this is actually the um, Foxbox web terminal. And what's nice about this is you don't actually have to open a SSH connection every time you want to say remotely manage your um, Proxmox node, you can just visit the IP address and they'll give you a web terminal where you can interact. Um, so the one file we want to change here is located right here. And we're going to want to scroll down to the lid section. So what this file basically does is it's the configuration for how the Linux system handles your um, actions like your power button your, your lid closing, uh, sleep button, stuff like that. So these three lines here, we want to uncomment them. And this is what handles the lid. We want to change all these to ignore so that the system doesn't actually do anything when the lid is closed or anything happens to the lid. So we're just going to save this. And then we're going to restart that, um, that service. So we'll restart the system D login. And that should basically have changed it. So I'm gonna go down to where the laptop is, uh, close the lid, and hopefully we can still interact with the terminal. Okay, so I've just shut the Okay, so I've just shut the lid and you can see we can still interact. Everything is working just fine. So that's it for basic configuration. There's nothing else to do. So we'll move on to configuring PFSense. Before I dive into installing PFSense, I wanted to make a basic visualization for what the network would look like. 
My main purpose for PFSense in this config was to completely segment off my home network from the actual lab environment. For some specifics, the bridge connecting it to my router would be Virtual Bridge 0, which is labeled the WAN interface in PFSense. And the bridge connecting it to my virtualized lab would be Virtual Bridge 1, which is labeled the LAN interface in PFSense. Then all the other internal machines would be connected to Virtual Bridge 1. This is a very simplistic approach, so configuring it didn't take too long. Now that the basic PFSense interfaces were set up, I decided to create my Kali box so that I could have an internal machine that I would be able to configure PFSense and test out the network with. Okay, so everything should be done installing now. Um, and we can see if we go into the console here, I've just logged in, everything works as normal. We can probably ping our, um, our PFSense machine and it goes through. And we can also visit the PFSense portal at that. We're going to go accept the risk and we can see that it works. So this would be the default credentials are admin and uh, pfSense, I believe. Let's save that. And there we go. That's it. And we have our pfSense and our Kali machine set up. So we're going to move on to installing Ubuntu now. The last thing to do in this small project is to set up the server that will host our Docker images and potentially other applications we might want to run in the future. And for that, I'll be using Ubuntu's server distribution. After that, I also installed Docker and spun up a quick portainer instance. This footage is pretty boring, so I've sped it up here. Okay, so Portainer is done installing, and we can check it's running by doing a docker ps, and we can see it's in the list here. Um, it runs on port 9443, so let's check our IP real quick, and then we'll connect. So we're 1.101, so we'll go to the Kali machine, and hopefully if we do um, 1.101, 9443 here. That should work. Clients and an HTTP request. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have to do HTTPS. There we go. And there we go, that's Portainer up and running. So now I'm just gonna configure the last thing we wanna do uh, and install OS Droop Shop and we should be done. So I'll be back in a second. For some troubleshooting, for some troubleshooting, we can see um, OS True Shop is running. Actually, if we go to port three thousand here, there we go. That is the simple Docker installation. So we can play around with this on our Kali machine, and that is basically a very tiny um, home cybersecurity lab setup. And this is easily expandable as long as um, you don't have any hardware restrictions. So that's just about all for this video. For some closing thoughts on this video, 
I think that this project is definitely a good way to learn a bit more about different home lab software, like Proxmox and PFSense, while also getting the chance to set up an environment to practice cybersecurity in. If you plan to try it out yourself, I would certainly recommend either using a laptop with at least 16 gigs of RAM or upgrading an existing one to avoid any hardware-based limitations. This video just barely scratches the surface for some of the things that you can do with Proxmox. Here are some topics that might be interesting to explore in the future. And finally, if you have multiple old laptops lying around like I do, it could be worthwhile to play around with Proxmox clustering, which is a technology that allows you to group the resource pool of multiple computers together. But for now, Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.